and you realize that you have to be like one person when you're at home, but then you feel like you're another person when you're out with the people. And the ones that have it the hardest are sitting right up over here. And the reason is because it's very obvious when they go anywhere. Brother Alhamdulillah is from Mesh, from Egypt, read the Quran for us tonight. You see him sitting here, look very nice in his Muslim costume. But if he wants to, he can trade that out this quick and put on, you know, sport coat, tie, the whole bit and walk out and go, Hey, what's up, baby? Nobody will know. <laughs> Nobody will know he's a reciter of Quran. That he has, mashallah, a beautiful voice, and mashallah, he memorized Quran, mashallah, read in Taraway. They just think he's another bebop guy. It's, hey, what's up? And he can go right by anybody, no problem. What's she going to do? Because it won't matter what she says. <laughs> the hijab is going to give it away immediately. So, for the benefit of those who don't understand why, that's why when she goes to the school, she takes it off. That's why. It's not because she didn't love Allah. It doesn't mean she's not a good Muslim. It means, how can I deal with this? I can't be two people. And have this on. But I, at least if I take it off, I can try to do the two people thing. Otherwise, I'm going to become a basket case. Because when they go to the school, they're going to give you a hard time. When you go to work, they're going to give you a hard time, right? So let's be fair and let's don't start by picking and pointing over in this way. Can we do that? Because if you want to attack the sisters on the situation of hijab, I'm going to tell you, let's talk about the lehya. Let's talk about the beard. How many of you like to talk on that subject? Anybody? Huh? I didn't think so. How many sisters would like for me to talk about the lehya? Huh? All of them. Mashallah. Okay. Well. <laughs> one brother told me one time, he said, Could you pray for me? I said, I'll pray for you. I'm a Mustafa. I'm a traveler. I like to pray for you. You know, Allah, except from you and me and all. He said, No, particularly, I need for you to pray for me that I'll grow the beard. I said, what did you say? He said, I want you to pray for me that I'll grow a beard. I said, I can't. He said, why? I said, that's shirk. What is shirk? Shirk is making a partner with Allah. It breaks the first commandment in the Bible and it breaks the first commandment in Islam. La sharika la, there is no partner with Allah. Allah says in Quran, more or less the translation, I never forgive somebody who makes shirk partnership with me in worship. But anything less than this I can forgive. Did he say that? Is that what he said? Yeah, pretty close. And in the Bible he said, Thou shalt not have any other gods besides me. Meaning with me. There's no God with God. He's God. That's it. And I was saying that to him. I can't pray for you like that. That's making a partner with God. He said, What? I'm asking you to pray that I'll grow a beard. I said, no, that shirk partners with Allah. Because Allah is the one who grows your beard for you. But I'll make dua that you'll quit cutting it off. Ooh, that hurt. <laughs> oh, got me. Then he, another one, he come to me, he said, you know what? I'd like to grow it, but my wife, she doesn't like me to have a beard. <laughs> I said, you got to wonder about a woman that wants her husband to look like another woman. <laughs> you know, they never invited me back to that town again. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, well, hey, what can I say? <laughs> Can't win them all. So when you think about it, a lot of it, a lot of it's going to boil down to a communication problem. And the rest of the programs we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to get into it a lot deeper. But that was the program to kick it off to get it started so you understand that we're living in two worlds.